so hello friends welcome back uh, we are meeting again for this uh, mcqs multiple choice multiple choice questions series and uh, today we will discuss one more topic from this morphology section and that is mcqs on inflorescence okay multiple choice questions on inflorescence so see here what you see in this picture this is inflorescence this is a specialized branch on which flowers are being produced in groups so this uh, group of flowers on specialized branch this bunch of flowers this cluster of flowers cluster of flowers on a specialized branch is called as inflorescence now this uh, branch is having or this inflorescence is having this central axis as you can see here and just a minute i will take the pointer so this is the central axis or the main axis of inflorescence and this is called as the rachis or peduncle sometimes uh, uh, there is uh, it, it is uh, differentiated that means uh, the main axis or central axis can be differentiated distinguished into two parts the lower part uh, on which the flowers are not directly produced it is called as the peduncle and the upper part of the inflorescence on which the flowers are directly produced that is called as the rachis so we can say that the peduncle is the stock of inflorescence like in case of flowers that we studied uh, the flowers are having the central axis or main axis and that main axis can be differentiated into two parts the upper part is called as the thalamus on which the floral leaves calyx corolla endosium gynosium are di are directly produced whereas the lower part of the central axis uh, on which the floral leaves are not produced directly and that is called as the pedicel so pedicel is the stock of flower and thalamus is the upper part or central axis of the flower so similarly here the central axis or main axis of the flower uh, of this inflorescence can be called as the rachis and the lower part which is the stock of inflorescence can be called as the peduncle uh, one more difference is there sometimes this inflorescence is uh, branched branched structure so peduncle is that central axis or main axis on which flowers are not produced uh, but branches are produced and the branches are the one on which flowers are directly produced so these branches can be called as rachis branches are rachis on which flowers are directly produced so you simply remember in uh, you keep in mind that the part of main axis or central axis on which flowers are produced in groups that is called as the rachis and the part of central axis or main axis of inflorescence on which flowers are not produced that part is called as the peduncle so this is inflorescence a specialized branch having a group of flower cluster of flowers this is the inflorescence of your holy basil plant uh, tulsi osimum sanctum and this is very uh, special type of inflorescence this is called as verticillaster uh, inflorescence that we will uh, discuss later so we will start with our question so first question the main axis or the central axis of an inflorescence bearing a group of flowers is called as what so pedicel petiole rachis and just now we discussed pedicel is the stock of flower petiole is the stock of leaf rachis or peduncle is the main axis or central axis of inflorescence and uh, the upper part on which flowers are directly present that is called as rachis whereas the lower part of the central axis on which flowers are not produced directly which acts as a stock of inflorescence and that is called as the peduncle so here the answer is option c the stock of inflorescence is called as so direct question is given there pedicel petiole peduncle just now we discussed the stock of an inflorescence is called as the peduncle so c is the answer which of the following is true about the racemose inflorescence we studied uh, there are two types of inflorescence uh, racemose and cymose racemose is the one in which uh, there is indefinite growth of the main axis or the central axis that is rachis the rachis here goes it goes on increasing in length continuously that is the apex of rachis is never terminated by flower the flower is never produced at the tip region and therefore tip region is free to grow and during its journey it goes on producing flowers laterally so it it has started journey from this point and it is going on and producing flowers so whatever flowers that are produced at the basal region these are older flowers whereas the flowers which are produced at the upper region uh, are younger flowers 
and this order this succession is called as acropetal succession that is younger flowers are produced on this main axis or central axis at the upper region younger flowers are present at the apex older at the base so this is called as acropetal succession so this is like this and yeah, the main axis of central axis going on increasing and this is the apex or uh, terminal region where younger flowers are present whereas this is the base basal region where older flowers are present so this is the case when the main axis or central axis is long elongated like this but sometimes it is flattened uh, its growth is suppressed and it becomes a flat structure it becomes a cup like structure and this is called as the receptacle so when it forms a receptacle a cup like structure so in that case the apex which was present here initially it gets like this and it the apex comes to lie at the center center and therefore the younger flowers are now at the center so this succession is now called as centripetal succession or centripetal order so this is again a characteristic of racemos so when the racemos is having central axis long elongated the order of succession of opening of flowers is acropetal and when it is uh, having uh, the rachis has become receptacle uh, cup shaped structure then the order of opening of flower is centripetal so all of these are applicable to the racemos introsense so all of these this is the right answer option d is the correct for racemos okay which of the following is true about the cymos introsense exactly opposite of racemos is true for cymos that means it is definite introsense because the main axis of central axis grows and it forms a uh, flower at the very terminal region apex so that when flower is formed at the apex there is no further growth of that main axis or central axis or the rachis so whatever flowers are now it has to produce it has to produce the flowers from its uh, lower side lateral branches are produced from the lower side of this terminal flower so that succession is called as basipetal succession because the younger flower is pro uh, produced at the base and older flower is at the apex younger at the base so this is basipetal succession and when the central axis here becomes a receptacle in that case the order of succession the order of succession of opening of flowers is not centripetal it is centrifugal that is younger flowers are present at the periphery and oldest like this uh, instead of growing like this it has grown it has uh, grown like this and the oldest flower is at the center younger flowers are present at the periphery so these are all applicable all of these all of these is the right answer when the central axis of inflorescence is branched and the flowers are produced on the branches you know i told when the uh, when the inflorescence simply when the inflorescence is branched then it is called as what okay whether it is a racemos type of inflorescence or cymos type of inflorescence uh, if the inflorescence is unbranched it is called as simple inflorescence if the inflorescence is branched it is called as compound inflorescence for example i take the example of racemos racem 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 is a type of racemos inflorescence if the inflorescence is unbranched racem then it is called as simple racem racem but if the racem is branched that means uh, the main axis is called as peduncle and it produces branches which are called as rachis and on these branches flowers are produced then it is called as compound racem compound racem so when the inflorescence is branched it is called as compound compound racem for example compound racem or racem of racem it is called as so d is the option here you just remember when inflorescence is unbranched it is called simple when an inflorescence is branched it is called as compound option d is the right answer when the main axis or central axis the term rachis is used here when the rachis is elongated long elongated structure flowers are acropetal that is younger flowers are at the apex pedicellate they are having stalks flowers are having stalk then the inflorescence is called as what so this is very basic type of racemos and that fundamental racemos is called as raceme where rachis is long elongated flowers are acropetal and flowers are pedicellate with stalks the inflorescence is called as raceme and when this raceme is branched then it is called as compound raceme okay option a is the right answer when the rachis is elongated flowers are acropetal just like raceme and sessile here is the difference in case of raceme flowers are pedicellate here flowers are sessile then the inflorescence is called as okay here the inflorescence is then called as like b is the answer when the rachis is elongated thick and fleshy 
one more difference thick and fleshy flowers are again acropetal that means this is racemose type flowers are sessile just like uh, your spike unisexual unisexual flowers in case of spike inflorescence flowers are bisexual here flowers are unisexual and they are covered uh, by means of uh, a protective structure and that is called a spathe which is formed by the bracts the whole inflorescence is covered by the spathe and such an inflorescence is then called as what it is called as the spadix all these characters uh, represent spadix inflorescence so c is the right answer when again same rachis is elongated but here the rachis is thin weak are forming wire like structure wiry pendant pendant zooming structure and flowers are acropetal so this is racemose flowers are sessile just like your spike and uh, spadix but the whole inflorescence is unisexual in case of uh, your spadix flowers are unisexual male flowers and female flowers are present in the inflorescence but here the whole inflorescence the entire inflorescence is unisexual means the inflorescence may be either male inflorescence or female containing only male flowers or female flowers so that is the condition uh, in what type of inflorescence so that is the question racemose spike spadix and catkin so this inflorescence is called as catkin so answer is b catkin type of inflorescence now here the rachis is not elongated it is shortened it is shortened the growth is short the growth has been shortened it has uh, minimized uh, minimized growth when the rachis is no no more long elongated as in previous cases flowers are acropetal again pedicellate just like racemose with all the flowers right placed at the same level see here all the flowers means younger flowers younger flowers as well as older flowers uh, okay so we know that uh, younger flowers are present at the apical region at the apex and older flowers are present at the base in case of racemose inflorescence and what is the condition here flowers are placed at the same level so younger flowers are present here older flowers are present here and this is the level where all flowers are present okay so here younger flowers will come here with the with the help of their pedicels huh? and they will produce flowers here so younger flower starts originating from here with the help of pedicel they will reach this direction this level whereas older flowers which are at the base they will produce uh, they 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 will produce flowers with the help of their long pedicels to come at this region at this level so this is obvious that older flowers which are present at the base they will have longer and longer stalks or pedicels whereas younger flowers which are present at the upper region they will have shorter and shorter stalks so that all the flowers older flowers as well as younger flowers they will reach the same level they are placed at the same level so this is the situation and when this is the situation in inflorescence then it is called as corymb type of inflorescence corymb c is the answer where flowers younger flowers and older flowers are having pedicels of different lengths so that they are all placed at the same level corymb next one when the rachis is suppressed rachis is shortened further and suppressed almost to nil so rachis is very very small and it and it looks as if all the flowers younger flowers and older flowers are being produced from the same point from a single point such a suppressed rachis is there and flowers are centripetal so here the acropetal succession has changed into centripetal because there is no more length to the rachis and therefore a uh, older flower which used to be present at the lower level and younger flowers at the upper level now younger flowers are at the central region and older flowers are at the at the peripheral region so that is called a centripetal succession flowers are again here pedicellate so having they are having stalks and the pedicels of equal lengths so that flowers are placed at the same level now see here in the previous case what we see, what we saw the flowers uh, were pedicellate and the pedicels of older flowers and younger flowers were of different length younger flowers were having shorter pedicels older flowers will, uh, were having longer pedicels but here all the flowers younger flowers as well as older flowers they are of equal lengths huh? and therefore they are placed at the same level so here younger flower is produced from here and it 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 reaches this level younger flower is also present at the same level and it reaches the same level and they all are having same uh, length pedicels because the rachis is very suppressed it is almost to the nil and when this is the situation the inflorescence is called as umbel type of inflorescence so c is the answer 
So in case of umbel, pedicels are of equal length. Both uh, the younger as well as older type of flowers are having same length pedicel, whereas in corim, the length of pedicels are different for younger and older flowers. So umbel is the right answer. Now see here, when the rachis is flattened, now here the rachis is no more long, elongated, or it is suppressed. It is it is flat structure. It forms a it forms a cup-like structure that is called as receptacle, and it consists of the receptacle consists of receptacle consists of very very small flowers, and these are called as florets, and which are centripetal. Younger flowers are present at the center, older at the periphery, uh, and they they are surrounded by involucre. Which is made up of bracts at the base of inflorescence. When this is the condition, the inflorescence is called as what? So that is the question. So here in this case, the inflorescence is known as capitulum or head inflorescence or anthodium inflorescence, which is a characteristic feature, which is a characteristic feature of uh, your family composite, composite of higher plants, which is also called as asteraceae, aster family, sunflower family. Uh, sunflower, triadax are the examples, chrysanthemum are the examples. So here the answer is option D. Okay, matching type questions. Column one types of inclusions is given and type two, their examples are given. So see here, radish, mustard, cisalpinia, this is called a shankasu in Marathi. Uh, it, uh, they are having the same type of inclusions. Whereas the uh, gold more, uh, it looks like shankasur, but it is uh, some somewhat larger plant, gold more. It is having compound resin. That means resin is branched here. Uh, then Acheranthus, called Agada in Marathi, is having spike inflorescence. Polyanthus also, tuberose, spike. Whereas Amaranthus is having compound spike inflorescence. So after matching, you will get the right answer. That is option A. Again, matching type questions. Spadix, compound spadix, catkin, corium, different types of inflorescence are given. And their examples, you have to match. Okay, in the exam, they will they can also uh, give you a single example and ask the name of inflorescence, so that will be also easier. So here, cassia species. There are several species of cassia, cassia which show corim type of inflorescence, whereas mulberry shows catkin, that pendant, pendant type of wiry rachis, whereas coconut is an example of compound spadix. Coconut is compound spadix, and amorphophallus called surang in Marathi, colocasia, that is aram. Aru uh, in Marathi, that uh, is the example of spadix type of inflorescence. So you can easily match and you'll get the answer. Right answer is option D. Okay, next one again umbel, compound umbel, capitulum uh, inflorescence are given and their examples are given and you have simply to match. So see here coriander and fennel, these are the examples of compound umbel. Coriander is not showing simple umbel. But it, it shows compound, branched, branched umbel. The sunflower and tridex show capitulum, head type of inflorescence. Centilla sciatica, Brahmi, a medicinal plant, is having a simple umbel type of inflorescence. So you can match. Option C is the right answer. The inflorescence in coriander is called as. So this is a simple type of question. Corin, compound corin, umbel, compound umbel. So here the right answer is compound umbel. Coriander is having compound umbel type of inflorescence. When the main axis or central axis, rachis, is unbranched and it terminates in a flower. So main axis, when it terminates in a flower, the inflorescence is called a cymose. And here the main axis is unbranched and it is uh, not producing any lateral branches. So this inflorescence is called as what? So this type of inflorescence is called a solitary sign. Solitary sign means only one flower is present and uh, that flower is produced either at the terminal region or, uh, or in the axillary position. But only one flower, no other flower is produced. And usually, uh, if we see the definition of inflorescence, it is a group of flowers, a uh, cluster of flowers, or a bunch of flowers on a specialized branch. But here, only one flower. One flower um, uh, is, um, is usually uh, cannot be considered under inflorescence, but it is considered as inflorescence. It is called a solitary sign because if you see the example of solitary sign, uh, that is hibiscus, rosa sinensis, or your, um, what do you say, uh, a common name, china rose. China rose, in case of china rose, uh, there is a distinct articulation or a ring-like structure between uh, the pedicel and peduncle. Peduncle, you know, peduncle is the stalk of inflorescence on which flowers are present. So here a single flower is present on this peduncle. So this is peduncle, stalk of inflorescence, 
this is pedicel stock of flower and on this pedicel a single flower is produced so in between uh, in or in uh, in between this pedicel and peduncle there is a ring like structure which is uh, called as articulated structure and so uh, this proves that this is not a single flower uh, but this is inflorescence huh? are you getting solitary sign hibiscus rose sinensis china rose so a a is the answer here okay the inclusions in china rose also that is a direct question a is the answer yes now we discussed solitary sign uh, there is a distinct articulation between the peduncle that is the stalk of inflorescence and the pedicel that is the stalk of flower in inflorescence of what so you know that it is uh, found in case of china rose solitary sign inflorescence basic type of cymose fundamental type of cymose inflorescence when the main axis terminates in a flower so it is cymose type of inflorescence and one lateral branch a single lateral branch is produced from its base at a time at a time one at a time a single lateral branch is produced that also ends in a flower so it ends in a flower a lateral branch is produced like this it will produce flower and from its base again another lateral branch will produce so this happens in succession at a time one lateral branch is produced so that type of inflorescence is called as what so this is a type of cymose inflorescence and as the word one is there so this signifies monocasial sign mono means one casial you can consider casial as a branch one branch monocasial sign this is the right answer b and when the main axis terminates in a flower and a single lateral branch is produced in succession on different sides uh that is uh, so this is the main axis uh, that terminates in a flower it it gives rise to lateral branch that also terminates in flower from its base so you see this lateral branch is being produced on the right side so the, another branch that is produced from the base of this one will be produced on left side so right left right left there so that is alternate alternate uh, succession so such a type of succession is called as what so of course this is monocasial type of uh, inflorescence and this alternate not on the same side on different sides the branches are produced on different sides right and left sides so this is called as uh, monocasial scorpioid sign because it uh, it gives the appearance of scorpion there is a curling of uh, flowers at the end of this inflorescence and uncurling is uh, visible at the region of opening of flowers so the the entire structure looks like the scorpion and therefore it is called as scorpioid scorpioid me oid means like scorpion like scorpioid inflorescence monocasial scorpioid sign a is the right answer when the main axis terminates in a flower and each lateral branch is produced not on the different side but on the same side so uh, the lateral branch is produced either on the right side right 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 side or left 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 side so it forms a sort of spring like structure and that is called as helix and therefore such a inflorescence is called as helicoid sign because it forms helix and a single lateral branch is produced so it is monocasial helicoid sign b is the answer when the main axis terminates in a flower and two see here two lateral branches not one but two lateral branches are produced from its base on the two sides of terminal flower then the inflorescence is called as of course you know that two lateral branches two means die die casial sign so c is the answer here and when the main axis terminates in a flower and more than two lateral branches are produced from its base then it is called as poly poly means many polycasial sign option d is the right answer so matching type of questions different types of cymoses are given and you have to match their examples options are given here so see here calotropis nerium calotropis ruti ruti in marathi nerium kanair exora bottle brush so uh, no no not bottle brush this is a, a separate ornamental plant so calotropis nerium exora uh, they show polycasial sign type of inflorescence whereas hamelia tomato potato they show monocasial helicoid sign the jasmine nectanthus dianthus gerardendron these are the examples of uh, your uh, dicasial sign whereas bougainvillea ranunculus these are examples of monocasial scorpioid sign so after matching you'll get the right answer and that is answer is option c okay the special types of inflorescence like hypanthodium as per your syllabus you have to study hypanthodium cyathium and verticillator 
what what is elastor these are basically what type of interactions are simos or stimos or both or what so here the answer is simos hypanthodium that is found in pig ficus uh in which there is a receptacle type structure which is a completely closed structure containing female flowers unisexual flowers inside and uh, the uh, the inflorescence opens by means of a small pore that is called as postule that is hypanthodium and uh, uh, you see or cyathium cyathium is a special type of inflorescence found in one plant called as euphorbia pulchrima and this uh, this this is very characteristic we'll discuss about it later and verticillaster inflorescence uh it is found in it is a characteristic feature of family lamiaceae or labiate mint family uh, lucus or your osimum sanctum holy basil uh, the very first picture that we saw in the first slide uh, it was showing verticillaster so all these inflorescence special types of inflorescences are basically cymose type of inflorescence b is the answer so name and their examples are being given just now i told you euphorbia pulcherima this is cyathium intrusions lucus uh, and uh, your holy basil osimum they show verticillaster intrusions uh, because these are members of family lamiaceae or labiate and uh, ficus or fig showing hypanthodium type of intrusions so after matching uh, you will get the right answer that is option c okay which of the following intrusions look looks like a single flower that is interesting hypanthodium cyathium verticillaster capitulum now if you see cyathium intrusions this one shown by euphorbia pulcherima uh, it looks like a single flower because cyathium intrusions consist of uh, the receptacle and on this receptacle there are uh, unisexual flowers called male and female flowers there is only one female flower at the center and th this female flower is being surrounded by four to five male flowers but the male and female flowers are very very small they are uh, called as florets and they are very reduced uh, there is no structure like calyx corolla uh, you getting so these are called as uh, naked flowers um, a male flower uh, just looks like stamens whereas female flower just look like looks like a uh, carpel with stigma style and uh, your ovary so uh and and one more thing that uh, the these are being surrounded by the involucre or whorl of bracts involucre it forms a green involucre structure which, which gives the appearance like uh, petals so this entire inflorescence which consists of male and female flowers and this bract uh, on the receptacle it looks like a single flower uh though it is a single intrusion it looks like a single flower and uh, so here the answer is cyathium the intrusion which looks like a single flower there is one more intrusion which looks like a single flower and that is called as capitulum or head you have seen sunflower uh, but sunflower is actually it is not a single flower sunflower is not a single flower that sunflower consists of many small flowers inside that intrusion which are uh, called as uh, disc florets and array florets uh, okay so that is a single intrusion so it looks like like a single flower so similar thing happens here uh, here cyathium type of intrusion looks like a single flower so here the answer is b okay which of the following intrusion produces flowers first in dicasial cyme and then in scorpio cyme that is the reason all these special type of intrusion are basically cymos or they are uh containing cyme in process so here question is which is the one which consists of first dicasial and then scorpio cyme okay i will give you the hint you have studied it this inflorescence is called as verticillaster inflorescence which is a characteristic feature of family lamiaceae or labiate now what happens in this family the leaves are opposite that means at each node two leaves opposite leaves are produced uh and and at each node uh, where two leaves are present in the axil of each leaf in the axil of each leaf there is presence of one inflorescence and that inflorescence is called as dicasial cyme that means it produces flowers at the tip and from uh, that flower uh, two lateral branches are produced which also produce flowers so this is called as dicasial cyme so in the axil of uh, each leaf there, there are two dicasial cyme now this dicasial cyme later 
instead of producing flower in that manner they are modified as a scorpioid sign they produce flowers only in one direction sorry uh, only, uh, only on, on, only lateral branches produce no two branches are produced and therefore it becomes monocasial scorpioid sign scorpioid because the branches are produced in right and left direction so uh, the single intrusions on this side goes on producing flowers the other intrusions on this side goes on producing flowers and the flowers are produced in a cluster all these sessile flowers then cover the whole node in this manner and it it forms a sort of whorl whorl around the node but as they are not produced from a single intrusion there are actually two intrusions so this whorl is called as false false whorl and there is one technical term for false whorl and that is called as verticel verticel means small whorl and therefore this intrusion is called as verticillaster verticillaster a characteristic it is a characteristic feature of family lamiaceae or labiate mint family uh, your holy basil lucas like that so here the answer is option c that is the correct answer okay next question the intrusion of which of the following families is called as capitulum or head intrusion so here uh, you know that capitulum or head is um, it has been shown by composite member sunflower family plants like uh, sunflower tridex or your chrysanthemum in case of chrysanthemum chrysanthemum uh, uh, disclorets and reflorets are not present all flowers are similar so uh, that is the condition so b is the right answer here option b okay so these are again some of the references college botany by ganguly das that the basic and very interesting very good book for morphology some of the uh, websites also i have really, thank you very much for kindly listening to you uh, kindly listening to this uh, session okay uh, if you have any questions i will stop sharing if you have any questions any queries you can write to me email or you can write in the chat box uh, and again all the best for your uh, coming paper study hard and fetch very good marks and i hope i am uh, confident that you will get uh, very good marks in your exam thank you thank you very much mm -hmm.